Good morning. Bonjour. Goedemorgen. Guten Tag. Buenos dias. Um, well, I'm Helga. Uh, I'm here uh, for ages already. I'm a dinosaur, like most of you. <laughs> um, I'm happy to moderate this morning. And it's going to be a great morning. You know, talking is nice, but working is better. So this is a workshop. So if you thought you could lay back, do some mill stuff and things like that, no, no. This morning, we start working. The next two and a half hours, we're going to be occupied with early warning systems. OK, there will be breaks. <laughs> but there's only time for breaks if you work properly, quickly, neatly, and do what I say. Then we have some time for breaks. Otherwise, I have a time issue anyway. Early warning. It's so important that uh, people are informed, but not only the people, all the institutes in between, organizations who have to organize, think about uh, traffic, think about health, hospitals, and municipalities. And how do you reach them all if something is going to happen? And you know, you work in news stations. We see it coming days ahead and they just wake up when some um, footage come in and they say, oh, there's something going on. Yeah, that's almost past. So how do we get the attention in advance? So we're gonna create crises today, real crises today. And you're um, up to your acting skills today. But I'll explain that to you later. One of the main issues where we can um, easily get access to real-time information is the satellite images. Oh boy, 20 years ago. Do you remember the quality of the satellite images? <laughs> and I'm that young that I still remember that they have to print it every half an hour. Oh, unbelievable. But things has changed a lot. And maybe you've noticed that lately in April it was, there was the new images, or May, the new images of the Humitsat Mediasat's third generation imager one with new, very detailed images. Well, of course, we want to know a little bit more about it. So we will have Mark Higgins. Mark Higgins is the training manager of Umitsat, but he's not here. <laughs> he's somewhere in Germany or having fun with his family. I don't know. But well, today everything is hybrid, so we have a video uh, from him. So he's going to send us a message by video. And I think the video will be started now. Hi there, I'm Mark Higgins from UMATSAT, and in this short presentation, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Metasat third generation satellite and some of the new things that you will get, and how you can maybe use some of it in your media presentations. The satellite has been launched, uh, the first in the series. It's in orbit, it's healthy, the instrument's doing fine. What we're doing now is working on the ground processing and we're planning that the pre-operational data will be made available in November. What that means is that there will be a public data flow. You'll be able to get hold of the data, but it's still labeled as pre-operational. We'll be still making some slight tunings. We'll still be checking. And we do recommend that it's only used for experimentation and not in operations. Once the satellite is declared ready and the data flow is declared ready, we put it in what's called operations, and it will then be named Mediasat 12. What are you going to get? You're going to get enhanced images. You're going to get more channels. I'll show what that means in a moment. You're going to get them every 10 minutes. You're going to get them globally. And the highest resolution on the instrument is 500 meters. That instrument resolution is available on two of the channels, and it's available in such a way that you will be able to generate uh, imagery, particularly in the visible spectrum, so looking at the daytime stuff, at 500 meters. So you can generate quite incredible imagery for your region. We'll also be producing lightning images for the first time from Geostationary for Europe. The resolution of that is at two kilometers. I'll show you some data for that. That data won't be available in November in the pre-operational stream. The, because it's such a new instrument, that's going to come slightly later on. Of course, all of this data will go into the computer models, so into numerical weather prediction. It'll be used in bench forecasting and it's a contribution to risk-informed early action, which is something, uh, a theme that you're going to be working on later on, I think, in this conference. And it's important to us because this is the main task of the instrument, is to contribute to protection of life and property, uh, both in the near term and 
being able to generate forecasts and warnings that are then actionable, and so supporting that process. How can you get hold of this imagery? We'll make it available on umetsat.int. So that's the view service, umetview, view.umetsat.int. But of course, the image data should be available to you in a more uh, operational type flow. And ideally, that'll be through whatever display system you're using. So if you happen to have a display system, you'll want to be talking to the people who support you to make sure that they can get hold of the MTG data. This is the first satellite in the series. Future satellites will also bring additional capabilities. We've got an infrared sounder, a rapid scanning service for Europe, and also for Europe, an atmospheric composition monitoring service. That's part of the European Commission's Copernicus program, and that will be available in a few years. Um, we'll tell you more about that as uh, we get closer to those data being available. So let's turn now away from the words to the images. So this is the first image that we have in the first day of images I'm going to show you. And what you can see from this zoom in is just how much more we can see today. We've never been able to see, in this case, the Alps in Europe at this kind of resolution from geostationary orbit before. So this is new. And of course, this kind of zoom in, you can generate for the parts of the world that you're interested in. Now, we don't just have the zoom in. We can also then see how the clouds move. So we've got the data every 10 minutes. So this is a 24-hour loop. And you can just see the quality of that true color imagery. But of course, we still got the nighttime imagery. Now, what some people do is put the low clouds and make them blue for this kind of imagery. That's used more in a forecasting application. For media applications, you may want to just keep them white. But you can just see how beautiful that is to see the real deep blue. And that's because we've got an additional blue channel on the instrument to be able to do that. So the, uh, the blue ball now does actually look blue, blue. It's quite an incredible thing to see. The lightning imager, what we see here, so this is some of the test data that we have. This is looking over the UK, and you'll see these flashes of lightning. The lightning imager works at a two kilometer resolution, so it'll sit over the coarser resolution of, of the flexible combined imager, the main instrument on MTG. And you can just see how incredible that lightning is. So we're putting it over a background image uh, in this case, now as we get towards the night, that background image is going to disappear and we'll just see the lightning. Obviously, you'll be wanting to put this lightning data onto the other images that you have from the FCI. This is a particular test package that had to use a particular background. The lightning imager data will be available slightly after the main imager data and it's new. So it's going to take some time to get used to and time to work out how to present it in a media format. It's available, though, for the full disk. So it's available for all parts of the disk that um, FCI and the Lightning Imager can see. You can also see, so I mentioned that blue earlier, we have an additional blue channel, which means that we can see finer scale ocean structures as well. Now, FCI, MTG, is not an ocean color instrument. In order to properly see chlorophyll and properly see ocean constituents, we need slightly more data. But here, you can just see along the coast of Italy there, along the, the northern coast, you can just see that turbidity, so those blues that we can see. And if you have lots of flooding, bringing the um, muddy water into the oceans, you'll be able to see that as well. And you can do this at 500, kilometer, uh, 500 meters, sorry, so you can start to do this for lakes as well as uh, ocean areas. That blue channel is also very sensitive towards aerosols. So we're starting in this true color imagery to see a lot more aerosol. This is from the Canadian fires earlier on in the year, Canadian fires. And what you're seeing, just as well as those cloud structures, you can see how the smoke has been entrained into those weather systems. And this is all the way from Canada. Um, and so we do have a lot more aerosol ability within the instrument. As well as having that additional blue channel, we've got additional channels which are sensitive to fires. So we have a much better fire capability with the FCI instrument. So this is looking over Central Africa, and you can see just some of the fires during the course of a day. Um, and this we can get up to 500 meters looking at this fire data. Obviously at night you lose the ground surface information. I'll just play that again so you can see it. Have a look at that fire just to the north. You can also just see the smoke coming off of it as well. So this is a brand new capability for geostationary for um, our part of the world. And you're going to be able to hear more about that as we uh, learn more about the instrument and its uses.
Of course, the data are also used in operational forecasting. This is just an example of some of the imagery we have. This is looking over the Atlantic region. So this is Norway stretching over the north part of the UK and out towards Iceland. This particular thing is the cloud type RGB. So we have a few more channels there which help us to discriminate between different cloud types. So those of you who also have an operational forecasting role may be interested in this. And below it, we've got a thing called the sandwich product, which we can use to show much, much higher scale uh, the convection and the variations in cloud top temperature. So this is the kind of thing you're going to get from the Metasat instrument, the kind of thing that will be available to you through your own display system and through view. It's a real storytelling machine. We really hope that you're going to be able to use these data in your presentations to talk about the weather as it is today and to illustrate some of the climate challenges that we're facing. I'll finish with one particular favorite of mine. So this is the uh, von Karman Vortex streets just off the coast of Africa. And you can just see the beautiful cloud structures there. And this is going to be daily. We're going to be able to get images like this every day for where you are, for you to use in your storytelling. So please use it, enjoy it, and be wonderful with it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love the passion. Oh, it's beautiful. You see him melt. <laughs> I love it. And probably you as well, because we're fond of good, real good satellite images. And it's going to help us in um, seeing what's going on and how things are developing, especially when there are extreme weather events coming up. So, Umatsat is used pretty well, but to do it the right way, WMO. Um, managed to set up a kind of early warning. There is a um, request that by 2027, everyone on Earth should be covered by early warnings. 2027. So that is four more years. It's most end of the year, three more years. I know in the Netherlands they're working on it already. Um, I spoke with the guy who was in charge and he told me a few other countries are already having an early warning center to set this up. Do you, do you know if in your country there's a kind of early warning center? Who does know? Just one. <laughs> to, of course, the Americas. <laughs> of course. Um, so